Hi everyone, um, as you can see, here is the white and black tiger that we've worked on on the draw along sessions and some of you asked would I finish it <laughs> and despite me being a little tight on time I want to finish it so I'm in the studio of an evening for a change and I've just got it all set up under my proper camera um, and I'm just adjusting the lighting a little bit there so we're going to carry on working on it and hopefully get it to a finish might need to take a couple of sessions um, I'm not used to working in the evening <laughs> um, let me just adjust this camera angle one more time just see if I can just get it a little bit straighter on there we go that's pretty much spot on there now okay so I'm going to go back to working how I would normally work so in other words I'm right-handed, so I tend to work top left to bottom right. So I'm just going to bring in some glassine paper. And all we're going to do is literally repeat some of the things that we've already done <coughs> on the tutorial. So I'm going to bring my reference photo in. So as you can see, we've got a lovely dark area up here, but there's hints of the white stripes. Um, but it's just softened back. So I'll pop them in. Well, we've already got them in. Um, I'll knock them back with my black. Go in again once more. Won't be using the um, drawing white over there as much, if at all. So I'm just going to come in with my pro colour that we've used all the way through. So literally just going to come in, really light pressure. Just want to add in a tiny hint up here. I'm not going to zoom in on this. Um, I've got it all in shot so that you can see me working all over. Um, I might zoom in. I need to put that eye in, I've just remembered. <clears throat> so I'm just coming in marking in some of this fur with a little bit more direction than I did when I blocked it in when we were just mapping in our stripes so I'm just putting in a little bit more preciseness on them there And then I'll come in with my black and we'll knock them back. And obviously if you've watched the previous sessions, you'll understand completely what I'm doing from what I'm saying. I've already seen a few versions of this one finished. They look amazing. So I thought, whoops, I better get mine done. And it is really therapeutic using this technique. Okay, this will brighten a little bit more in here, but we did work on this area on the last live session, so I'm just coming in. I want to do a big chunk at a time, basically, so I want to get all of this chunk done. I'm not going to spend too long doing this, because you could just get really caught up and start to get really caught up in detail. Okay, so I'm going to come back up now. I'm going to soften some of this back. I'll cut through some, as in complete lines all the way through. And I'm also going to push the stripe, the black stripe, out over. So there, I've knocked it back. I haven't taken it away completely. Um, so there's a real hint of the dark grey, and that's what we want. We want just a hint of the white stripe. We want it to be a really nice, subtle, dark grey. And we're just achieving that by mixing or glazing our black over our white. If I take it back too much, I can just come in gently with the white over the top again and it'll just keep mixing and blending. But 
I want to make sure this side is really nice and dark. And all we've done there is just add a nice little bit of texture. Okay. Alright, so down onto this next stripe. I'm going to cut into it from that top area. Now the stripe here, let me just pop in a little bit more. It actually goes upwards at that angle. Remember I showed you how to do get your angles correct. So I'm make sure that stripe's in the right place. That one there. And that one there. This one's come over a little bit too far, but I know I need to come in here anyway and take some of this back out. Pretty much back to black. And that'll give me my stripe back in there. Soften. Softening my white stripe with cutting through with the black. of it showing. It gets a bit brighter, like I say, around here. It's softening up through there. Softening means I'm just glazing and cutting through. Softening the white back. Knocking it back. Using my black. Line that up. This is the only area I might contemplate popping in a hint of um, the drawing whites. But even so, I'm not sure. Let me just take this back first of all, this area up here. I'm correcting my stripes as well as I go. up the height of that so the top is there and the bottom comes in there and then we come around so just cutting up through some of this and then we'll come in over the top with another layer of white just to brighten that up Pencil's pretty much staying on the paper the whole time. Okay, so we've got this stripe here, comes in up to here. Let's start in that. Just checking I've got my correct start and finish points and it's coming up at that angle. All of this needs taking back. white again. But you can see there's a really nice dark hint of that grey there with the black stripes and then we'll sink some of this away as well. Ok, 
There we go. So I come in with the white and just do some flicky hair motion. Some of this will come in over the top with our black, but we need just a few more hints of the fur through that. quite a lot there and I don't want it that bright so I'll knock it back again in a second we just take it all the way down here and then we need to correct some of that brighten that little bit and you can see how much it's brightened it but we just need to take it back again so I just need to sharpen my black see my black's gone a little bit dull there let me just sharpen that one up I'm not sharpening my white at the moment so let's come back up in here now very light glaze over that area. In behind there is a little bit of a darker grey than this little section just in front of it. Just going to cut through some of it. So I'm lifting off now doing more like fur strokes, so sort of flicks. And then cut up again with my black. correct so always always checking angles um, the height and dimensions of where things are are they all in correct alignment with each other ok 
Okay, so let's get that little section done quite quickly. So I'm going to come down now around this side of the face as well. So let me just move my glassine paper. stripe coming down around here and around underneath the eye. So let's just come in, make sure we've got enough of our white down before we come in and soften back down with our black. I say the, the Mount Ward doesn't take a huge amount of um, pigment. We want to make sure it's lovely and soft. Of course, we want to create the effect of our this being fluffy stripes. Now let's come up here. Just want to make that a little bit fluffier. And now I might need to take that back a bit, glaze over it once more with our um, black, just to soften it back. I'm lifting off here, so that comes in nicely, a real nice curve. Look at the distance between there and there, so there and there, and then we've got a curve coming around. So we'll correct that with our black, and from there we just got that highlight coming in through there. And then look at that shape of the black. I've got a feeling that just needs taking out a little bit more. Just to correct that shape. So you, you let's say you're drawing your white stripes, but you're also doing your black stripes at the same time. If you take out too much of your white, just pop it back in, put too much back in, just knock it back again with your black. I guess we've got this curve coming around here as well, which we'll need to correct. But remember, we need to pull, we need to overspill some of our white into our black. Okay, so this comes around here. And we've got that curve around the bottom edge. You can do this really slowly if you want. Go as fast or as slow as you like. I'm just tending to work it quite quickly. So if you need to slow this down and watch it on half speed, absolutely fine. But I, I did say that you know if I do this, I'm going to work it um, as I would normally work, because otherwise I've got no chance time-wise of getting this one done. Okay, so I'm just going to come around there. So we've got this shape down on the bottom there. So you see I'm mapping in a lot of the white before coming in with my black, which will correct it, both correct it and also knock the white back to create the lovely grey tones. So we've got that top of that one. Me in there. And then we've got that stripe end in there. And it just strengthens up around here with the amount of white. Again, I may pull in a little bit of the Derwent drawing. I 
It's not often you'll see me working as naturally as this. Normally I really slow things down for either the draw-alongs or the tutorials. But Alex, I just wanted to make sure we got this one done. I'll come up to the eye next. So have we got enough in around here? Let me just do a really light glaze just through there. This will pretty much fade away to nothing down here though. So I'll just pop in a really, 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 really light glaze. Because I can see a hint of grey through there. So when I come back in over the top, with my black will take it back as far as possible. So we're going to put a little bit more black in places um, than in others. So when, here it's even darker than it is here. So here's say one layer, here we'll have a couple of layers of the black. So let's just come in there first. I need to get that brow in as well. So let me just measure that up just to make sure where we're at. So the brow is coming in here and then top point of that line is just coming around there. Okay. So let's cut into that eye or that layer just underneath the, what's the, let's call it the lower lid, the stripe below the lower lid. I cut back into it the other way now as well. Okay, so come down here into this. I have to be careful because my lights are reflecting. So I'm going to glaze through this. I'm going to cut through all of this and then come back in over the top with my white. It needs another couple of layers basically. At the moment it's looking grainy where it's gone down. So I need to just do that with the black and then come in over the top again with the white. Doing it more like fur strokes. It's just built up an extra couple of layers there now, so it's going on smoother. sharpen my pencil really but that has now gone on that much smoother just from popping in an extra layer of black then white sometimes just keeping putting white down on top of white doesn't really do anything I don't know what the logic is behind that okay so now let's just come back in again Correct any lines. So I'm doing um, pencil strokes really quick 
jabby pencil strokes. We need to correct that stripe a little bit there. Then we need to glaze over the top, but using, like I say, little stubby strokes. of markings through there. Okay, so really, really, really short little strokes down through there. Okay, so got this mark in through here. Hopefully there on the camera you can see where that is darkening it all back. And then the little dark spots are still showing up nicely because we have a hint of white down and a couple of layers of white in some places. And that just means that when we pop our black on there it's just going to a really nice light grey or dark grey depending on how much white it is mixing and blending with in there. So here keep an eye on the direction of your first strokes because they're starting to become almost horizontal up here. They curve down and then out again. I need to come in with the white again just up across there. In fact, let's do that. It has all gone back quite dark, so let's just come in. Over some of that area there. big shape back now. Is that a big shape in there? Or I've lost that one, so I need to pull that one back now. So, starting point is just in here. And we're going to pull it. It's also cutting. We need to get that, that line there just right as well. So let's pull that one out into that stripe and up into here. And some of these lines will cut through. coming down through here. So let me just get the angle right here. But we need to cut through and glaze over most of this stripe first anyway and then come back in over the top with our white. So let's just cut through it all glaze and knock it back. I'm just doing it all at the angle of 
F. That needs to come in. So where I want it to come in, I just bring it in a little bit more with more black in there. So I'm going to glaze really lightly over all of that white area. Press a little bit more pressure where I want it to be more black. where you've got say two layers of black pencil gone down it will be slightly darker than the area where one layer of black has gone down if that makes sense so I'm going to come in again now with the white over the top and this time it will go on smoother because there's more pigment down and each light layer that you do just mixes and blends and builds and fills the tooth. There's not a lot of tooth on here to fill. But it just smooths out each time you put a layer down. And again, I don't mind smoothing that out a little bit more. So I'm just going to glaze a little bit up there. And I might need to then come in over the top of the black if I need to take the... Um, the shadow back anymore and again I'm going to cut through now from that shape that softens that edge it's all about the transitions from the dark shadows out into the lighter highlights Needs a glaze down through there as well. And then we come in over the top with our white. Some real little cuts in of the black stripe up into the white, and they're quite jaggedy. So make sure you try and achieve that. in here so I get a hint of that in there a little hint just coming around here of another one line that one up it's just in there these don't have to be exact but it helps if you've got them pretty much in the right place down over this area we need to get some grey in here but I'm going to come in with our um, stylus and soften some of this back as well sorry marking um, some of the texture of the muzzle okay so I'm glazing that all over there and then we'll come in with a white over the top But that has sunk that back really nicely. Anything that we need to take back super dark, we can come in over the top with another layer and quite press quite heavily with our black pencil. Um, so we need to just finish this stripe here. So 
So I'll glaze over that. Now that we've got some de definitive black lines cutting through there, I can just come up, glaze over that. Just This is just about getting an extra layer of pencil in here now. And then we'll come with our white over the top, and then we'll just do this last little chunk down here. That's all of the side of that face done. shape here corrected. Little glaze over the top. See? Some of our definitive lines to cut through. And then we'll glaze. I'll need to sharpen up both my black and white. Because I cut some of this through. This is the jaggedy one, so I'm cutting through. It's that jaggedy fur edge. Get some definitive lines. You've also got this lovely, it comes down and around, so I'm just flicking some of that up through there. and then we'll do a light glaze over the top. And as I said, the places that we've already put in those definitive lines will just go a tiny bit darker. In the areas where I'm only putting one layer of black as a glaze down over the top. As you do it, it will make sense a lot more than me just talking about it. So I need to get more white in there now. But as you can see it's starting to come together really nicely there. So let me just sharpen up and also have a quick mouthful of drink. I always forget to drink when I'm talking. some nice sharp tips there on my pencils. Right, let's have a look now. I'm going to come in with a really light touch and just start to feather some of that fur texture. And it will go down really lightly because it'll, it's just going to catch any areas with a teeny weeny bit of tooth. And just give a hint some of the fur direction. Now this is where it starts to happen, the fur direction, as we come out into these stripes. So this is just going to push and pull to so push outwards and then flick inwards as well. S-shape flicks up through here. Now, I don't want to take it up too far. This is perfect up here, the amount of um, darkness that we've achieved. So 
So just this little bit here is a bit brighter. So we'll come in down here. Just let it fade away then up into that darker grayer area. Remember, we're going to do a top to toe, as I call it. I know it's not a toe in sight, but at the end, we balance everything up by just doing a, a once over of the whole picture. So this, that'll be the kind of thing that we do. So if we need to tweak any of the detail, I'm not worried if my stripes aren't absolutely perfect. Um, as long as all my fur is going in the right direction, it's giving that lovely hint See, it's a tiger. <gasps> but my tiger might look a little bit different to your tiger. Hopefully so, because I want to see your style coming through. We'll probably come back in again, let's say, with a sharp black pencil. But even though this looks like we're taking it quite bright, it's nothing compared to our bright white over on that side. We've done a few little glazes up through there now, and that is just really nicely softened. starting to look nicer. Like, so I know I need to come back in again possibly with my, my um, black stripes and then just cut through all this again, maybe texturize it up a little bit more, do those transitions again. But I'm pretty happy. the feel of that through there. Each time you sort of tweak it yourself, you know, you just correct it a little bit more, correct your shapes a little bit more, your placement. rising all the way down on that side. Just lift that away and see where we are at. OK, 
Okay, so I want to get this brow area all corrected now, and that eye. And then we'll come up and just do pretty much the same as what we've done here up around this area. Okay, so I'm going to speed the next part up because we are literally repeating this, but we will bring in obviously our Derwent White, um, sorry, Derwent Drawing White just to brighten up. So I'll slow down when I come to do this outside area again, but I'm just going to get this bit done um, and speed it up a little bit. Then I'll be back to you, back with you on real time, okay?
Okay, I'm coming back to this one. Like I said, I'm going to do the rework. I need to start bringing in the uh, drawing pencil up here. That's why I've slowed it down again. And I need to use the drawing pencil all on this side. Um, so let me just carry on, come back to doing these bright white stripes up across the top of the brow first of all. And then I'll speed up again whilst I do it around this side. So I've done my dark areas in here. I'm going to come in again probably up around there. Let me just zoom out a tiny bit and then you can just see. I don't want to miss that edge. There we go. So let's line up where our brights start, just up through here. So again, just like we did on this outside edge, I'm going to come in with my drawing pencil here. And then because it goes down looking quite rough, we will come in over the top with our Pro Color, push it down so that it smooths it out. Make sure you've got the angle going down here as well. Super, super bright up through here. I'm thinking back to when we did the outside edge. I'm sure we went in first with our layer of drawing pencil, just like we are here. Pulling it both ways just to get a good fill on that paper. Then we squished it down with our um, Pro Color. So we check that angle. And then we can come in again over the top if we need to brighten up with more drawing pencil. It's no good me saying Chinese white because they're both Chinese white. Okay, so I'm going to come down to the next couple of areas again as well. I'm just going to brighten in there a little bit. See, that would I'd like to take that even brighter if possible. The only way to do that really is to come in over the top with possibly some, because um, there's no tooth there now, possibly some watercolour pencil. Or well, you could come in over the top with some solvent and that will dissolve away your wax and your binders and it would just give you enough um, possible tooth to get another layer in there. So just be conscious of your tooth and your pressure because the last thing you want to do is not be able to get any pencil down. So I'll put some little hints across here and then we can knock those back out again with our black. It's just where we get the transition going from the light to the dark. It's the only thing with this drawing pencil is trying to keep it sharp. I'm turning it all the time but it's just not the same as if I'm working on um, a textured paper. Um, where I can self sharpen. You can see it's just blunting up. But normally on a, on a sanded paper as I keep turning it, it self sharpens. It's okay at the moment because we'll cut up through with uh, black as well. But nice and quick down through there. I'm just brightening up a couple of little sections just down through here. Whilst I'm here. 
a shame, I say we can't get any more around there. Just coming in with a little bit more pressure just up through there. So we haven't touched that since the actual draw along session, right back at the beginning. So there we go. So yeah, if, if I could, I'd, I'd like to increase the intensity there, the brightness even more. Okay, so Pro Colour next, Pro Colour White, just to come in and press that down. I'm not sure if you can see, if I just move this down and then zoom in. Oh, it's on fixed focus, so it's not going to work. Okay. I was hoping it would be able to see the difference there, but I've got it on fixed focus, my camera. But here you can see where it's smoothed out, and here you can see where the, it's still quite waxy. So let me just come out again. Because it doesn't like the zooming in. I forgot I changed it all so that it didn't lose the focus for you. Okay, so let's press this out now. Can I just come in there a little bit more because I've just added a little touch more in there as well. This pencil's nice and sharp, so we're going to press this in. We'll come back in then with our black. Because up through here, there's hardly any flicks of hair there. But remember, we need to press this in and also we need to do the push and pull of the dark stripes. And see how much I've taken that up there. If you look at the actual shape of the black there, and I've really pushed up into that area. Bring it down a little bit, there we go. So this is more about just squishing that pigment down into the mount board. Keep a real good eye, excuse me, on your angles. Come over everywhere that I've got a little hint of that drawing pencil down. Doesn't matter if you come up over the edge there. When you put your mount or your mat on, that will squish. Squish? I keep saying squish now. That will um, square it up and frame that edge nicely. See how rough that looks compared to this area out here. So let's come in with our black and start to correct. So we want to correct this shape first of all. Let's make sure that that's flicking away. Let's make sure they're flicking away at the correct angle first as well. So I'm coming back to this area from a couple of weeks ago really so I just need to... Okay so now those flicks need to be coming, pulling down from that top edge. Just correcting that shape in there. down through and then we'll square up from this side as well because it's actually cutting all the way through there in a couple of places so just pull doesn't matter if it's not exact you're not that's that's the pressure I don't want you putting on yourself okay so there's a few hints of some lines just coming up through there that's 
not top edge. I don't want you to get bogged down, let's say, just get a nice pace going and So I work a little bit quicker when I'm filming like this because I'm not stopping to answer the questions or I, t I tend to work how I feel the slowest person out there might be following along so that they can keep up. So I tend to stop and start, answer questions and also go a little bit slower so that I know that people can keep up with the draw along. There's quite little little tufts through here. So I'm pushing some up, pulling some down. And then we'll come in with our white over the top. some of it up as well. It's almost like little triangles in through there around that brow. top with the white and just soften anything up. Just break through that. Very much repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay. So pro color. It's sharpish, but I'm gonna just put it through the sharpener again. The drawing pencil, I'm gonna pop that one in the sharpener again. The point won't last long on the um, the drawing pencil, but I'm just going to come in with it anyway and see what we can get from it. <laughs> That's my big, like my big boy and my little boy barking downstairs. I normally stop and edit out the dogs barking, but people have been telling me they're quite... Okay, that, that, that's little Sherlock. I might have to stop in a second. Um, people think it's quite funny to hear them barking, so I'm starting to leave them in. Otherwise, my life is a series of editing out dog barks. settled again. Obviously a blade of grass moved in their street and they're not happy so they're telling it off. this one going in over the top it's a little bit itty bitty so it kind of like leaves lines um, little these little itty bits of um, pigment rather than it being a nice smooth 
lay down so I'm flicking some of this up over there and I need to get the like eyebrowy whisker things in as well so I need to come back in with the black it's very rough in here I'm just going to smooth some of that out I just needed an extra coat of um, grey, well white and black mixing to make that grey and same up here. I just want to soften some of that black tone that I popped in there. strengthen up a few little lines mine are nowhere near exact but it's just giving that impression of that little furrow in that brow and then I do need to just soften this transition up here with a touch of white over the black and then that gives it turns it into that lovely soft grey coming out of the shadow so like I say I'd really love to bump this um the brightness of this up um so much with the white but the board doesn't allow it, us to do that so this is as good as it's going to get so I'm just going to pop that Eye whisk, eye whisker. <laughs> I'm just gonna pop another one in through there. I'll come. I'll just follow it around with a touch of black, and then that'll just give us that. There is some little black whiskers through here. could come in with a tool, a knife or something. Um, so looking back, possibly I should have indented maybe that right at the beginning and then filled it with some white um, pigment. Or you could just come in with a little touch of, I might come in with a little touch of white ink just over the top, just to boost those whiskers up nicely. almost stippling but literally really random um, pencil lines just coming down through there and then I'll come back in do the opposite now with my black just to cut through I don't want to overwork it because it will just muddy up into a grey. So let me just get this line up and out through here. So I know we did rush this a little bit on the live draw along, so I'm hoping I haven't lost the tooth that I need in through there. Let's have a look. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm going to speed up now whilst I just get this bright white and stripe finished around here and then we can come and I'll just continue it down around here as well um, and then we'll come in and we'll just work the nose area okay
Okay, kind of sped my way through that a little bit, um, but it's given the effect that I wanted. Um, got a little bit of debris I keep brushing away and then smudging. Um, so, as I say, it's looking okay. Um, it's quite funny, I was once told, I think it was Anne Kohlberg, when I was with Anne out in Seattle, um, teaching for her. She did say that um, as artists do our worst work when we are um, demoing or doing something live. Okay, anyway, back to this. So I pulled out um, another stylus here. This one's got a slightly wider end as well. Um, so I'm going to come in and just start, you know, we did start doing it in through here. Um, it's just I had to rush it a little bit for the draw along just to start giving you an idea. So I want to come in and just start to texturize. I'm going to use the small end and the large end. And I just want to make sure I've got this lined up as to where I'm going to begin. So I know I've got some marks up through here. Okay. And then coming down over the nose. Okay, so we've got that dark mark there. So I just want to start to wiggle. Um, I'm going to use both ends and then I'm going to start to just really texturize. So there'll be some wiggles and some stippling. Lots of different marks really, just to give different textures. Um, and then I'll glaze over it all with my white. Okay, so we've got a mark in through there. We've got our some spots there as well that I know we've got. Right, so let's texturize. Just gotta be really careful. So down through here, I am literally just going to and I'm gonna pull in the bigger end as well. I'm just going to come in, firm pressure, I'm just stippling, I'm doing some little wiggles down through here because I'm going to glaze white and then black but I want to make sure that I'm saving some of the pure black of the mount board and by pressing it down or debossing as it's called, not embossing, embossing is to raise the surface, I often see this miss um, translated as embossing. It's not. So let's come through here. Let's get this angle. So across from here. I know we did texturize some of this, but let's come in and get that all marked in there. Texturing through here. And it is texturized down through here, but it's still going to be the tone, tonal value that gives it the dimension as well. So it just comes around. So I'm going to stick again, just kind of real tiny little little strokes. scruffy little tiger I'm creating. <laughs> okay, this might hurt your hand as well doing this, um, so just be steady with it. If you feel like your hand's hurting at all then just give it a little bit of a break. So some more texture just down over there. Uh, go, it comes up 
and then around is a really weird one. Domestic cats, wild cats. Check your angles, it starts to come down as we come down over the nose there. Okay, so my reference doesn't show a huge amount going on down through here. So I'm going to possibly leave some of it. Oh, I'm not sure. I can see a little bit, and a little bit is, if I can see a little bit, then I should be popping it in. Let's get that lined up there, there, there. That's been bugging me. So let me just take that out. There we go. It was just a little something that was just knocking me off. And same here. Let me just get that. Is there? It's okay. We're going to texturize down through here then. I would normally possibly leave, like I say, this pretty much black down through here, but we'll, like I say, glaze white, then we'll glaze black over the top. This is going to give some texture. I'll leave those little areas there black. He's knocking back a tiny bit through there. So I'm using the large end. I really want these to show up. Okay, so I was going to texture in through all of here. Hardly see it, so which is giving that impression. Starting to hurt my hand a little bit here. Okay, there's the centre of the nose. So I'm not going to do all of this area, a tiny bit more. She says, looks like I'm filling in pretty much all of it. You might have a better image um, printed out or on your screen and seeing where all of this flow is going and coming from direction wise. I don't, so. Okay. So I have pretty much filled the whole area there. So even though you can't really see it, I have. <laughs> so, pencil on its side now, remember. Just going to use the pro color. We're going to come in very, very lightly, just glaze. Um, and whoopsie, enough to pull this texture up. And don't worry, because we are going to come in over the top with just keep an eye on the reference as well. We are going to come in over the top with. Uh, black just to take it back to grey. I 
this should just give us enough texture. Without us having to go in there with all our pencils to create all of the texture, basically. Let me just... Spill it out just over the edge. I'll zoom in in a second just so you can see that texture. And I'll be able to add more. I might be able to come in with the um there's the dog's barking again. I might be able to come in with the drawing pencil over on this side as well. We'll see, I don't want to clog up the... Clog up our indents with chunks of the um, waxy pencil falling in there. What I'll do in a second is I'll just zoom in and then you can see what effect this has had, but hopefully you should be able to see the texture there anyway, but let me just zoom in. Oh, I forgot. We've got the fixed focus, haven't we? Hopefully you can just see there. That texture. So what I'm going to do now, is over some of the area, is I'll come in with the tip of the pencil and I'll start to flip my eyes still back and forth from that reference photo and we'll be putting in kind of like pencil strokes but we want to put in more white in places on this side and this will still skip over those indents as well It'll start to really brighten down around that side. Like so we might need to pull in a little bit of our drawing pencil around here. Just to brighten it up. as well. So this comes up around the nose and then we've got this line coming down here at this angle. That's the side of that highlight. Just up through there. As quick as this. Keep it moving really nice and quick. It'll just really help you loosen up and stop you know, not worry quite as much about your mark making. I do do an actual speed drawing thing on um, live streams where I set a timer. 30 minutes, we all stop. <laughs> and it's like, oh, countdown, last 10 seconds, countdown. Then we just stop. Wherever we're at, we stop. And it's really good. It just gets you to loosen up. Okay, so a few little marks just up through here. Not much, just a few that I need to brighten. We'll do that on our top to toe. Although I've been doing a bit of the top to toe, jumping around as I've seen things as well. That is brightening up through there a little bit. Okay, so now this side, a few little marks I just need to add a touch more. So when it, when it goes dark gray, some will go darker gray than others. So a few little lines through there. Up through there. Now, I'm going to come in next with our black and then I'm going to mostly glaze but I'm going to, I'm doing it rather than just one big glaze over the top, I'm coming in and 
just need a little bit more there. Let me just... There's a couple of little marks there around some tops of some stripes. I just want to make sure I've done those before we come in with the black. Some areas have got a little bit more black on than others. So now I'm coming in pretty much the same as I came in with the white pencil and with the um, the oh, I'm losing my words, the stylus ahead of that. I'm just coming up there, making sure I've got this placement in. Coming up around there, coming up around there. Okay, so straight down from the eye. So I've got a little dark mark in here. So I want to make sure that I've got it just spot on. I think it is just through there. I'm going to measure it from the top of there. Top of there, yeah, it's just there. I've got a little dark mark just through there. So again, really fast, really fast work, but it gets very similar, let's say, to how I popped in the indentation marks. And then the white pencil. We're just doing a similar thing now with the black pencil. This just softens it all back and you'll just be left with a little hint of fur texture there. But it's all set into a nice deep shadow now. There's some little lights. I've got a feeling like I say I do need that um it's dark there. that's light there. I'm gonna need some of our drawing pencil just stippled up through here I think let me grab it lost its tip let me just sharpen up through this again so don't worry if it looks a little bit bright in a couple of places Okay, it's brightened. I've chosen just to use that. It's just brightened all that side of the face and just give me that lovely contrast through there now. I'll 
will come in and just pop back in any dark marks that need to go down through there. So it's a conscious decision to just brighten up all of that side of that face. It's looking quite effective already. So let me just finish coming down through here. Breaking up everything through there. I'm just really random with my pencil strokes. Hopefully you can see that. And that's just created a whole different texture there for that muzzly nose. And you can repeat that if you want to. You can go back in with your white pencil again if you want to bring it back up again. Um, quite happy with that as it is. So just sharpen up my black pencil again. need to decide if I'm going to smooth out any of this over here just to get in really fast strokes. might look like I'm doing this like I don't care but it, it's keeping my hand moving is what puts the energy into this piece. Um, stops it being really really flat and I think it's great, you can, you can just sit here if you want to and just work inch by inch. But I do think that you lose some of the life in a piece. It can look technically brilliant at the end, but I just feel that this, keeping moving like this, one, it stops you worrying too much, and two, it just keeps some life and movement into the piece like she's about to roar. So now I need to put all those markings back in again, but this is just now fixed some of that white there really nicely and brightly. So, black pencil, get my reference back down, and let's start to break through some of this and get some of our placement back in. Or just fired off into oblivion. I'm slowing it down here because I need to start getting precise now as we cut up through. Sherlock, like he needs an introduction. <laughs> That'll be 
Maybe one of the other doggies were going for a walk in the street. Past our house. How dare they come past his house. Okay. So some squiggles down through here. I might need to come in over the top with the white again. We've got um, just a hint of the nostrils showing through here as well. So I'm just breaking through some. I don't need to sharpen that pencil again. He's having a good grumble. So I need to come in over the top of some of these marks with um, a white just to soften them. Oops, lost the end again. That's me coming in with too much pressure on my pencil. Does feel like that's a little bit too high there. Mm. Mm. A tiny bit over, that's fine. Let's just pull it across a little bit more. So I don't want to get bogged down too much in the detail. Okay. Same there, I seem to have got that little line just out of place. It's the right height. Um, again, it could just come across a tiny little bit. Okay, so I'm, I know mine's not exact, but I'm really happy with how it's looking. So let's just come back in. This will soften some of the lines.
I'm coming just try and see if I can get any more down with this drawing light. So I've repeated that whole process a couple of times up through there. Um, I don't want to do it too. I'm not going to do it anymore actually because I don't want to ruin the effect that we've achieved. See, let me just turn that light away and you'll see um, that's a bit of more accurate um, I was gonna say reflection but view of it so you can see there I haven't put in all the details but you can see that lovely light hitting that side of the nose um, you could keep coming in if you wanted to come in like just up through here just give it a little bit more but it does go from bright light into, um, drops away into the darkness. Uh, so I do like that. So we've got the whiskers to get in. And let's say, I'm going to do the top to toe now. Let me just pull this toe because I don't think there's a lot that I'm going to do. Um, let's have a look. I like the tonal value a lot on the screen. Is there anything I want to take back? Um, I could just take it back a little bit, just a little bit, a little glaze in places. Just where there's a few odd lines that are a little bit bright, we'll just take them back, just there. Here it needs to be brought up a little bit lighter. A few little flicks. Just as that comes around there. I'm not worried if my stripes aren't exact. Um, so don't panic too much. Just a little bit more black down through there. Let's 
nice. this up a little bit more and if there's a little bit of white too much white showing let's just darken it go a little bit brighter around here but let's take it back darker and it will just intensify And same up through here, you could just carry on sort of cutting down into these stripes, really making them more textured if you want to. So as far as you want to take it, I, it's, it's fine as it is, um, but it's as far as you want to take it. So I'm going to use something completely different now to put my um, whiskers in and then I can soften them back then with my pencil. I'm going to use an ink pen. Um, I was going to do it with pencil originally, but I'm going to do a mix of ink pen and the pencil. And also with this ink pen, I'm just going to come in over the top here. So this is a permanent ink pen. Concentrating there because I need to then soften some of that back. It does dry a little bit um, darker, so let me just let that dry. This is why I wasn't too worried up here. About those. Whisker lines are not showing up because I knew I had this little tool up my up my butt sleeve. Okay, so over here I'm just going to soften this back now with my black pencil. defeats the object I know, possibly popping them in there. Okay, so that just needs a little hint more. And just let that dry. So a tiny touch in the highlight. So, whiskers. There's some crazy, uh, crazy whiskers in here.
Okay, so I need to come in over the top of some of these. So I'm going to come back in there, I need to sharpen the black pencil up, I'm going to sharpen the white pencil up, because where I've gone over some of those, some are more opaque than the others. There is more whiskers actually that I could have put in, but I'm going to just pick up my drawing pencil as well. Just brighten up a couple of those. sharpen them if we need to just by going around them with our black and we have actually got oh I've done it again okay so we've actually got if I do fine line like that and then another one coming out there these are actually black whiskers as well These pens have actually got a black one as well that you can use. And sometimes I just cut through my whiskers with my black pencil as well. It just gives it some extra tone, different tonal values going through the whisker itself. So I'm going to sharp a point on that drawing pencil. If not, I'll have to come in with the ink again. So let's just see if we can... See? It's really difficult to keep um, a nice sharp point. So I'm going to 
sink that one back as well. Okay, so I'm going to start fiddling now. Tiny touch more of my ink pen that I've put down somewhere and lost it. Right, I know there's a big one coming around there, actually I'm tempted to put that in there. Now that I've seen it, okay let's just go for it. Let's put that one last one in and then we're going to stop. I'm going to have to spin my board because I'm going to have to repeat that now. But that's how you can make some of your whiskers sink backwards and others pop forwards just using different um, mediums just to make them pop or sink back, make them more opaque or more translucent. And I'm just fiddling now. So. Okay, 
It's all we zoomed out completely. So I'm happy with that. Um, again, you can keep working it, keep working it, keep working it as much as you like. Um, keep texturizing as much as you want. Um, it's as far as you want to take it, really. But I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. So if you've enjoyed watching any of the tutorial and you've learned something, please do give um, the videos a thumbs up and please do obviously hit the subscribe to my channel button. That would be a really nice gesture. And apart from that, I shall hopefully see you all again soon. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.